Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! Uh, yet again, I, I've got my famous backdrop by Juan Ochoa. I, I, I can't get enough of it. I know there are lots of other backgrounds, and uh, I'm receiving feedback that I should really change. But I'm going to cling to it, because look at this guy. I love this guy. Uh, okay, all right. Well, I, I'm super excited, because this episode uh, we have on, uh, from all the way up in Canada, we have Jason Pitt from Genesis of Legend. How are you doing, Jason? Pretty good, although it's cooling down and most of the other frogs are hibernating this, these days. All right, well, we've got we've got games to talk about here, Jason. Are you are you ready? I, I understand that you've got a Kickstarter out for a game called uh, Cigarettes. I mean, seriously, Jason, I don't know about Canada, but here in America, we hide our tobacco use and the tobacco companies fund ad campaigns that point out how bad their products are and that they help people get addicted to. So why aren't you ashamed of cigs like most people? Think of the children, Jason. Well, it's actually more signals, or was that signatures? It's one of those things, but it, it's not cigarettes. It's fine. Oh. Uh, it's S-I-G. Oh, S-I-G. I thought maybe that's Canadian spelling. I don't know. You people are a little different here. So tell me what it's like. It's use everywhere. Ah. So signals, is this like a rush game? Uh, yeah, no. So it, SIG is a uh, setting, a multiplanar fantasy setting. Uh, which expands the Spark role-playing game. It's a diverse city in the middle of everything, um, where people can visit from throughout uh, an infinite variety of prime worlds and connected to places like the Plane of Fire and the Plane of Lore. Um, so it's a really interesting melting pot uh, of the city. Uh, where all of these interesting cultures and peoples interact. Huh. So, what do you do? So, it's an interesting kind of situation in that everyone wants a part of SIG because it's the gateway between everywhere else. You know how all, the old saying, all roads, read, all roads lead to Rome? It's effectively the same thing. You can only go places by going through SIG, which means that all of the local inhabitants uh, take advantage of the situation. So your characters are largely freebooters, mercenaries for the various uh, powers, be they gods or archdevils, um, or for some of the various political factions within SIG or representatives of the various cultural communities uh, present in the city. And a lot of the time, they go out on adventures um, exploring the various infinite prime worlds and extending the reach of uh, the powers they worship, the organizations they serve, or their people. Oh, now, now, so this is part of Spark. Now, uh, uh, my production assistant, Monkey Rogers, he he raved about that game. He got to play. He said that it's really powerful for uh, creating factions. It sounds like this is uh, this is really important for Sig. So, is, are there any um, evolutions to Spark, or or how, how does it play any differently for Sig? Yeah. So, I'll, there's two parts to this. One, uh, the System itself has been changed specifically to suit SIG uh, in a number of ways. For instance, uh, the city between actually warps and changes uh, at, during play based on which planes are closest to it and which ones are furthest. So um, sometimes during the game, you'll wind up getting the plane of ice lose the tether to SIG and the plane of fire comes in. This means that the streets, which were shaped like a snowflake, uh, turned to ash, and uh, some of the buildings uh, spontaneously ignite, and the entire city warps and changes. So there's some system changes that account for other peculiarities of SIG like that. Um, rules on how um, people who are faithful for one of the very various powers can uh, perform rituals uh, to 
gain their blessing or to invoke other kinds of miracles. There's rules for how people who work for the various factions are able to um, call upon the leverage of their factions. So, for instance, there's the Guild of Heralds, and people who work for the Guild of Heralds are able to use the leverage of the Guild of Heralds and read through the mail that th that faction delivers throughout SIG. So, whenever they want to read the mail, they have a power to do that. There's things like that that are specific to SIG. And then there's a few other things which are general system improvements. Uh, for instance, the old classic game of Spark uh, from 2013 uh, was a game that had four attributes, uh, body, heart, mind, and Spark. This has changed based off a lot of play and some feedback we've received. And now it's down to two attributes, Spark and Smoke. So instead of addressing uh, effectively all of the characteristics of the character, it's more of the characteristics of the player. So Spark is what the character does. Smoke is the byproduct of Spark, as in it's this, it is the um, world itself. So when the player wants to control the world, they have an attribute specifically for that. And when they want to control themselves, they have another attribute. So it's there's general system improvements like that that sort of streamline things and uh, improve the general experience of play. Oh, huh. interesting. Now, is the game done now? Yes. <laughs> uh, so this is my third Kickstarter. So what I've been trying to do uh, each time is have the games more and more developed. Uh, before coming to Kickstarter, because there's always challenges in publishing things. Cats will always light on fire, and that's usually an issue. Uh, very distracting uh, when it happens during a Kickstarter campaign. So I try to get it all as perfect as I can, as cl uh, close to the launching of the campaign. So this time, I pretty much completed the game. I'm doing the last copy edits. I'm finishing up the cover. I mean, I have a physical proof of the book. Whee. Oh man! I, I, I oh, I'm curious about the about the the cover there. You, so, I'm aware of this game called Planescape from back in the day, and one of the things that I really loved about it uh, is, is similar to your idea, but this city was called Sigil. Uh, but anyway, uh, it had Tony DiTerlizzi art, which was amazing. And, and and I understand you've got you've got a pretty cool artist too, at least so from the copy there. It looked great. Yes, I've got a few uh, artists on this project. The biggest one and the most impressive, in my opinion, uh, is Julie Dillon, who is a multiple award winning uh, artist illustrator. Uh, she won a professional illustrator award at the latest hugo's this year for instance and she did a beautiful image of uh diverse city um which is the cover for the book itself uh, and i also use it throughout the book uh to show off some of the specific characters and, and uh, that kind of thing okay well any award-winning current kickstarter guy i've got a serious question for you. Are you ready for a serious question, Jason? I'm always ready for serious questions. Are you ready for serious answers? I I have never gotten a serious answer to my serious... You people don't understand how important these... Okay, well, here we go. I, enough preamble. Let's get with the amble. All right. Who would win in a fist fight? Han Solo or Captain Kirk? Go. Define fist fight. Because Han Solo is great with the single fist, but Kirk is much better with the double fist. So it depends on where you draw the line on and what qualifies as fist fight. Hmm. I think we're gonna go with with uh, with a single fist. Well, that answers things. I'm I'm okay with that because. Star Wars is coming up, and Star Trek is like in the past. So, all right. Han Solo would beat Captain Kirk, according to Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.
thanks for coming in to talk about your games. It was great having you on. Thank you very much. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime. <laughs>